Dead, the show where the backward compatible crew and their guests tell improvised stories through role playing games. Previously on River of Time. Burn him, let's get out of here. There must be an ultimate ending. You hit the door, I'm loading the room. Oh my head, no! I need to get these executives out of the building right now. Come with me if you want to live. Does he mean metal help? Should we? Upstairs. They were talking about sending a new linchpin. It's not my device, I just find it. Before you guys tried to stop me. We're doing what? Fixing things. The moon people are an acceptable sacrifice. A signal received, right protocols activated. River of Time, Episode 4, Time Dam. You are all in a very small, this is like an efficiency apartment. What's the name of the apartments? Ramjet Arms. There's a, like a cot in one side. Uh, this room is very utilitarian, mostly because the other end of it, blocking the bathroom, <laughs> uh, what little of it there was, is a giant like cork board with a blackboard on the back. It flips. When you flip it over, there are news articles pinned all over it. Excellent. Um, there is a couple of notebooks scattered on a, a small table in, uh, off to the side. This is taking up over half of the room. All of this information. Oh. Since this is what greets you when you walk in. So mm -hmm. since he's a time traveler, this is... Okay, I need to make sure I don't step on any butterflies, <laughs> metaphorically. It is not. It's not? It's not, it's not a, it's not a, I need to not make these events not happen? It's not. Does, do I recognize any events that, you know, news clippings that are relevant to my uh, timeline? A lot of the dates on it are the dates from the list on the time, time device. I want to jump okay. straight to his conclusions. I don't want to waste time with this. I want to get it immediately. Um, all right, so you grab the nearest book, flip to the end of it, and it says very simply, why do I keep going back? It's the very last entry in it. Why do I keep going back? I take the oldest looking book and flip to the first entry. Does it say the same thing? No. The very first entry is basically a journal uh, talking about his daughter and the fact that he's going to fix this and he knows exactly how to do it. Oh, dead daughter. Do we see pictures in, in his house that might show his daughter? like, Or his wallet? She's not. She's alive in this time, I assume. Uh, not in we don't know. That's what I'm looking for. I'm there seeing is, if there's there any pictures one in of him wallet. with his daughter. And okay. it's of his daughter in an astronaut's uniform. And the... The badge on it reads Armstrong. She must have been on the moon colony the guy Yeah. Struck. So he was trying to prevent the moon colony incident. But you remember the, the radio announcer, the names it listed, one of them was Armstrong. Mm. Yep. He was trying to invent the internet early enough so that we didn't ever have a moon colony and she never died. But by doing that, he created Amazon. And that led to the time wars. Looking at the corkboard, you see... Uh, his name, or you see names marked with the name James Worrell written next to it over and over again. Each of these a major, major event. Uh, the announcement of Sputnik. James Worrell. Uh, with not the name of the scientist, but a note off to the side of it saying, How did he know James Worrell? Oh, wait. <laughs> over and over again. And at the, the first ones up in the corner, it's a very old newspaper clipping, and it very simply says that there is some argument over whether or not the Lincoln election was rigged, and that one of the vote counters had come under attention, a, vote, uh, a counter by the name of James Worrell. He doesn't remember any of those events. He right. keeps seeing himself going back in time over and over and over again. But he doesn't remember it. No, because it wasn't him. It was but it's the same guy every time. It's another John from a different timeline. Lynchpins. The evil John. He has a goatee. They're lynchpins. They're clones. Amazon is using him to make time work for them. Lynchpins. The Lincoln election. The launch of Sputnik. The moon colony. The internet. The assassination of Kennedy. The list goes on. You find that the notes he's drawn around um, 
around Ruby. Not around Oswald. Around the, the guy who killed him. Jack Ruby. Yeah. Show that his past is fake. He's only, he only existed for a couple of years and everything is gone before that. Whirl. So Whirl was Jack Ruby. Yes. That, that's what that means, yes. But I think he did this all to save his daughter. You know what? I bet the daughter's not even real. Or Amazon may have just given him that memory or told him that his daughter was in danger. To, to make him do this is on his own. Either way, we must stop Amazon. What year was the daughter born? I want to find out everything I can about the daughter. I'll roll notice if I need to. Paper chase. Hmm. Your obstacle on this is going to be a two. Okay. In that case, success. Looking through and checking, now that you know that this is Armstrong, you know roughly when she was born. And it's about 1987. Okay. So, roughly two years before where you are now. So Wait, she, she's a two-year-old girl? She should be, yes. But she's not here, so... Well, this is his conspiracy theory, I, uh, time travel hideout, probably. You also know that she was born in this, in this city, so, because, because this is where they lived. But wait, This is, is the city she's is from. Is there any evidence in this apartment of a two-year-old being here? Because there should be, no. if, if she ever had been. No. No. Not this apartment. He probably has a different one. So we need to find... His other apartment. He also so, said that it was mailed to him like 2012 to 2014. I, I think I see where this is going. John World is created by Amazon, sent to the past, then given devices to time travel or otherwise make sure that the history flows in Amazon's favor. And that explains why the dates are fixed on the device. Mm -hmm. We need to stop John World. We need to stop Amazon because they'll send as many worlds as it takes to muddy the time pool. You, you recognize if there is a daughter... It would not be this James World that died in your van, who's your partner you're standing in. It would be the actual James World, if he's here. Okay. Because we're because we're in the '80s right now, right? Yeah. So then we need to find. We need to go to the James World that exists here because. and prevent him from ever getting the device in the first place. <clears throat> That's how we stop Amazon. To the post office. I look around inside his place to see if I can find any sort of written address. We might be able to find where where his actual residences during this time period. Go ahead and make a group notice roll. Okay. And this is this is actually going to be a 10, strictly because you're looking for one bit of information in this massive array. So I'm at a plus seven by myself. Um, and hmm. then how much from you guys? One each. One hmm. each. So, so you oh, get a 10. Okay. Alright. You start pouring through the books and you realize that there's a lot of information here. So you turn over to you're not quite as advanced device anymore. Mm -hmm. Um run the algorithm, and what it does, it takes a look at all the possible outcomes, and you realize that at some point in the years he's been here, he's going to want to go and find and see his family again, even if he can't talk to them. Mm. Um, so you pick up his journal, flip through to about the midsection, about where it recommends it, and cut down the amount of hours it would have taken you to find this. There is one section, and in it, he says, I have made a mistake. My arrival was not as well planned as I had thought. I found myself and the two sons that I have in this world. <gasps> Wait, what? My family is there. My daughter, apparently something changed and has never been born. But I will still fix the future. Not every universe has Armstrong as a daughter. Or not every universe, not every world has a daughter in every timeline. So what happens when worlds collide. Oh. <laughs> oh, man. As I say that, I close the journal with like, that was painful. <laughs> oh. <laughs> 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 trying to think of what I want to say next. It sounds like ultimately what we're trying to do is stop Amazon. Whatever that means. Then we need to head to the and corporation. If that, means, if that means helping world in the process, that's great, but the important thing is stopping Amazon. You're being yeah, off again. We have to stop Amazon. What? Okay, Zikaya, what does it say? Please confirm receipt of message. Uh, is there a phone in here? In the apartment? Um, there's a small one, yeah. It's on the wall, rotary dial. Right. Yeah. So, I'm going to... Uh, You're expecting a woman's voice. Why? Are they? It, this is the woman's beeper. Hmm. 
I'm actually going to pull out my device, um, and I've probably got an app somewhere on there because I'm, you know, it's sort of like proprietary tech that the company uses. But what I'm going to do is have someone record a message and then apply an algorithm that makes it pitched up um, just enough so that we can sort of call the number real quick, say message received, can't talk now, and then hang up. Okay, I'm going to shortcut this. Yeah. You dial the number. Mm. Uh, the number you have dialed has been uh, disconnected or is not currently available. Huh? It's a no reply email. It's we need to call someone else to res- to send them the receipt of message. Well, they can't track papers. No. No, but they're going to know that something happened to the paper carrying it. We need to head to the corporation. Amalgamated Rivers. Yeah, LLC. we got to head to. We got to head to. Oh, back in the van. It's time to stop Amazon. Wait, are there any weapons in here, by the way, that they could that they could? Use? Okay, no. Yeah. I'm, gonna, I'm gonna take his journal with me, the one that we were looking through, um, okay. just in case there's something else that we need. Do you um, like you snap a picture of the board or anything like that? Yes, I would do that. All right, um, you guys find it. Uh, it's not hard. I mean, it's listed in directories, that kind of thing. Uh, not in the phone book because it doesn't want to be called. But when you call the courthouse to check for listings for local businesses. They give you the number, they give you the address. Um, it's on the edge of town. It's a nondescript black building out in the middle of nowhere, off of the road. Um, I assume we park the van well away from the building before we approach. Right. You guys probably can see it from, uh, from the highway. Uh, not very well, but you can see it. If you get out and you walk towards it, um, there's a fence, there's a couple guards. Uh, these look like regular everyday guards. They're not wearing the standard stuff you guys saw before. Uh, at this point, I think I've... There's no river here. Just throwing that out there. Does anyone have a jacket? Or uh, something I could wear over my tactical bulletproof turbo mic? I- I'm wearing a trench coat. Oh, I want your trench coat. I need your jacket. I will give you my trench coat. Now I'm only wearing um, suspenders and my... Nice white shirt and my black pants. You got those armbands that hold your... Yeah, totally. Yeah. At least you're not butt naked. Well, that's true. Um, oh, and my fedora hat, of course. No. Yeah. So it might not be a bad idea for you to go in alone first, just to talk to a receptionist and say, I'm a journalist and I'd like to yeah. interview someone. Yeah, I've got my press pass and all that stuck in my hat. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll go ahead and go in first. Then. Yeah, go for it. Excuse me. Can we help you? Um, yes, I, I'd like to uh, come in. Um... Do you have a, uh, um, they're kind of flustered, um, just a moment. Do you have an appointment or, um... Bernard Hutton. Like here? Bernard Hutton. Um, <laughs> reporter? Reporter, I get it, I see. And, and, I, and I tap my hat <coughs> with the, uh, with the press pass, like, duh. Do you have a, an appointment? Is that... <laughs> I, I work for, uh, the public. I don't need an appointment. I see, I see. Well, let me, um, let me make a call real quick. Get someone out here to, to walk you into the, to the front desk. He steps inside. You see him on the phone. Can't mm-hmm. really hear it because he closes the... Talks to a guy for a minute. Mm-hmm. Steps back out. Says, They'll see you. Um, it's a little irregular, but you've made the drive all the way out here. Uh, and they want to see what, you're, what it is that you want. So fantastic. Uh, he motions to the other guard and says, "He will be your escort. Let me get you a, a visitor badge." Um, he reaches around into the thing, pulls it out, makes a mark on it, hands you a visitor badge. So before you go and you pull you um, aside, or like if you, because we're not still at present, but mm-hmm. trying to basically talk to you real quick, give you a message. Um, they might be letting you in because they might recognize your name. Um, so if you want to take one of John's guns, that might be a good idea. And hide it where? He's got my trench coat. Yeah, that wouldn't work. He, he wouldn't have a place to hide. Well, if I'm not going in, then I... I'd... Yeah. Not to mention... Put, not to mention... Cargo pants. Well, I was kind of thinking... I'm not wearing they're cargo gonna, pants. <laughs> they're going to frisk him probably anyway. Yeah. So yeah. yeah. I, 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 I was kind of thinking idea. bringing one of you with me as my assistant. John's hiding. Well, John is not going to go anywhere without his gun at this point. I wouldn't he's bring a you soldier. anyway. Yeah, he's a soldier, so... <laughs> Take spreadsheet, man. Uh, that's kind of what I was thinking. Yeah, yeah you, you've got the... You've got the right profile. I go nowhere without right. Bessie. So you guys are waiting outside. Yeah, I think we have. What's to. our purpose here? What are we trying to do here? We need to get we need to get information about this company. We need to know how to stop them from taking power in the future. Through Worrell. Through Worrell. They might have information about Worrell. Maybe you've seen James Worrell in different places. 
drawn some connections. You know that he has some connection to this company. You're trying to figure out how that's possible. Because you don't believe in time travel. We're at World's End. I like it. What kind of what kind of news do you cover typically? Typically? Yes. I'm on the crime beat. Crime beat? Mm-hmm. They actually take you first to a waiting room. And then a very nondescript person in a business suit walks into the room. He is clean-cut, typical 80s businessman. There is nothing unnatural or unique about this person. He steps He steps in and says, Hi, I'm Stan. Pleasure to meet you. Um, Mr. and... Two Mr.'s... Hutton. Bernard Hutton. Hutton. Pleasure to meet you. And you are... Ed Cameron. Cameron. Excellent, excellent. What, what can I do for you? Um, I was hoping to meet with uh, a man named James Worrell. I'm sorry? My understanding is he works for the company. He does. Um, let's see. I don't know of any James Worrell off the top of my head. Uh, do you know what department he's in? No, but if I had to guess, I would say it's probably research and development. Okay. If you'll give me a few minutes, I'll go see if I can find him. Did you have an appointment? I do not, but uh, it's been an unusual week. Okay, very well. Um, if you'll both be waiting here, there's, uh, there's water in the back. Uh, do you have any coffee? I, I can send someone with coffee. Fantastic. Would they have an open bar in a waiting room in the 80s? He steps out. We bring you a scotch. Um, rocks. He's going to be gone for a bit. Do you guys want to do anything else? So what I'm doing really is just looking at my Delphi's device, and I'm just kind of like on watch. So anytime that it's some, it's going to ping that danger might be imminent, then we're going to kind of be ready to react. But for the time being, I'm just sort of waiting and watching. Okay. You guys care to do anything? I guess we can try to look at this, look at the area and see if there's any sort of like suspicious movement. I mean, is that what we're looking for? Or maybe, you know, we could do, we could, we could go around and look for, like, breaks in the fence or see if there's, like, an entry point if we need to. Without, you know, being super obvious and op- out in the open and spotted? This is kind of a wooded area. Let's creep around and look for a possible break in the defenses in case we need to get in. How about you do that and I'll, I'll, I'll give you moral support from the car. Got, like, a jack and some tools laid out in front of it? Yeah. Yeah. I'm just making it look like, oh, I had a breakdown. Yeah. So I guess I guess then John is um, staying within the woods to be not as noticeable. I guess then maybe okay. maybe it could hypothetically look like he's hiking in the woods. You never know. But in his pink polo shirt. Well, that's what you wear in the eighties. That's normal. Go ahead and make a check on tactics. This is an overcome for their okay. defenses. Okay. Okay, I got a six. A six. Okay. There is one. Um, there's kind of a what looks like an animal has run through um, the fence. Looking at it though. You realize this is very obvious. Like, it's a very obvious hole in their defenses. And as a soldier, I would recognize this is like a ploy, essentially. Yeah. You realize that this was opened on purpose. Um, so you continue on. Right. There's a spot where rainfall has washed out part of the fence. But it's grown dry since. So whatever creek that was is dried up. And there's a spot where you could sneak in under. Um, I, guess, I guess I'm going to report back my findings to uh, Victor. Mm-hmm. Make a uh, make a notice check. Mm. Damn looking, good. You're looking for a four. Yeah. Um, okay. So I'm you're gonna use my Delphi's device. Um, blanks cancel the minuses, which puts me at a five. Okay. Excellent. Um, you're not sure about this place. Uh, you run a couple things into basically kind of war games on it, just seeing what would happen if <laughs> if we're right about these people. What if we're wrong? What if what if Delphi's device spins through churns some stuff and then beeps a very, very simple message. If James Worrell does not work here, they're going to come for you. Good to know. And so basically, when no one's able to notice, I'm going to relay that to you and that if we find that he doesn't work here, we need to run. Yeah, I was kind of planning on that. A few more minutes pass. Um, Is there a secretary nearby somewhere? Probably went out in the hall. Okay. I want to talk to her. Okay. So you op- you open the door and it's locked. So we're locked in? You're locked in. Okay. It seems pretty simple, though. What do you mean? And it's just a door lock. Okay. I'll, I'll slip a credit card into it and pop it. I have a bad feeling about this. Well, what's your skill? Just, oh, yeah. I see what you mean. Well, we can do... The skill would be burglary. How about stealth? Uh, I, mean, I actually, I have burglary, so... It's do like, you? Yeah, uh, two. Two, okay. You slide a card through it. 
pops, the door kind of opens. That was a lot easier than I wanted it to be. After you. There's a receptionist standing outside. Mm -hmm. Or not standing, she's sitting at her desk outside, not very far from where you are. She looks up as you approach. Well, I have to say, um, my report is going to be quite favorable. Well, that's nice. So, um, clearly your security measures, at least uh, maybe not physically, but um, your, your policies are good. I have a few recommendations for your boss in, you know, in terms of making stronger blocks. Um, but other than that, um, I'm ready to uh, go ahead and sit down with your corporate head and uh, debrief. Um, which, of which department? Okay, and so what I want to do here is invoke a hallucination on her. I want to confuse or trick her into thinking that I am with internal affairs Ooh. of the company. Okay. And that what I've been doing here was performing an, uh, an anonymous and... Uh, not anonymous, that's not the right word. Uh, a surprise inspection, uh, inspection mm -hmm. on their security. I like it. Roll it. Okay. You're looking for a three. Ooh. Ooh. Um, no, it's fine. I had a four. Uh, that brought me down. Okay, I'll just re-roll it. It's time to bring in my new aspect. Um, <laughs> something along the lines of... Um, I've done this before, or I go unnoticed, or I, I, you know, I fake people out. Hold on, I've got this. Hold on, I've got this? If you word it that way, <laughs> because I can have a lot of fun with that. <laughs> you got it. There it is. So four. Four. All right. Describe your hallucination. I want those who encounter me to see me not as me, but as someone from corporate, specifically someone from internal affairs. Got it. Are you sure? Are you sure? Like, I'm from Division paper. Six. Yeah. She's got this. She's got this like eighties like, hair up, Ooh. kind of chewing bubble gum, kind of like eh, whatever. And is you show you. Is there like a pink streak in it? Yeah. Nice. Yeah, it is. Um, she's flipping a pencil through her fingers, that kind of mm -hmm. thing. Then you flash her your badge, your ID, and she looks at it and sets the pencil down. It's like, okay then. Um, well, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry for the facade, uh, but you seem to have uh, approved of our measures. Um, Mr. What, what did you say? Hutton, was it? Agent Alpha. Right, right, right. I see, I see you're with the um, investigations portion of Amazon. So I will not hold you up, because I don't want that on my record. So let me just update your badge. And uh, I'll send you, I'll send you on down. You'll need to go down this hallway, take a left, and then slide this badge through the lock. There, she pulls out a small box, sets it on the tray, pulls out a card, sets it into a slot, runs a couple of things over it, and then hands you the card. There's now an image on it. It's yours. Mm -hmm. Name, which is the fake one, and uh, what looks like a series of lines across the back. Nice vertical lines running across the back. And she takes your visitor pass, hands it to you. And, and your associate? He's with me. Does he need... And as he says that, I pull a pair of sunglasses out of my jacket and put them on. Oh, got it. Um, <laughs> it's like him. I guess... He's a nerd like that. You didn't specify your hallucination working for him, so he's just looking like a total nerd. <laughs> right. <laughs> Let me just... She pulls out another thing. What, what she makes essentially looks like a has permission in association with... And then name. All right? And she goes, she goes back to working. We're making it look like she's doing a lot of work. Very busy. And, so, and so as we're walking down the hallway, I offer you a pair of extra sunglasses. Excellent. Indoors. Why do you have these? <laughs> <laughs> I just keep them around for special occasions. Well, I, I put them on and I also extract the most advanced looking piece of technology that I have on me. Maybe that's my cell phone. Um, Probably. And, and, and make like I'm you know, recording <laughs> with it. Um, whatever it is. I, I mean, I probably still got my digital camera. Probably, yeah. Because I'm, I mean, I'm a photographer as well, so... I'll be making notes on my smartphone because they won't know what the heck that is. Either, <coughs> yeah, there so. you go. So, yeah, we, we're going to walk straight on in and, like, we know what we're doing. All right. Slide through the lock. The door opens. The room is completely different. There's none of this paneling. There's no carpeting, nothing like that. Beyond this point, beyond this door, you find what looks like a more modern office with paneled computer screens. Everything is... Far in advance uh, tech. Excellent. 
people are sitting down, they kind of look at you when you walk in. A couple of guards walk up to you. I'll just tap the badge and make to move right past them. One of them blocks you, and the other one motion reaches out to take your badge. Is there a problem here? I need to see your badge, sir. <sighs> Fine. I hand it to him. Takes it. Looks at it. Kind of looks at you. Looks at it. Puts it into a reader. What's your name, soldier? I don't have a name, sir. I'm number 11. Well done. <laughs> Pulls out, hands it back to you, says, You're approved. Yes, thank you, 11. You'll be in my report. Appreciate it, sir. Certainly it's good, sir. And I just keep going. I want to I walk towards the biggest, baddest looking set of doors or office or whatever in this place. Um, where, where the boss man clearly sits. First off, there's a map, and it's general layout of the building. Mm-hmm. Uh, marks fire exits, that kind of a thing. Sure, yeah. Um, on this floor, there's not one, there's an elevator that heads up. However, this building is not as large as the, as the others. And based on the vaulted ceiling, you're pretty sure this elevator goes up to the top floor, which is the only other floor. Okay. Then that's That will be, be the it. biggest, yes. Yeah, well, let's go. You get into the elevator, slide the pass, it takes you up. What are you guys doing? Victor, what do you think? They've been in there for quite some time. We could try to get into the building. If anything else, it might prove a distraction. For the record, you know that the timeline shifts are still happening. Okay. Yeah. So, hmm. What does that mean? It means that them going in there hasn't changed anything relative to you. Okay. Do we have any other leads? Hold on, it's been an hour and a half, right? We could have technically, given that I'm a soldier, would we have time to go to like a grocery store or something, get basic chemicals and supplies so that like, we can make like a bomb? Let's blow this thing up. Do we need to build up, blow up the building? Do we need to be a distraction? Wouldn't that compromise their situation if we... I think we can sneak in at the place that I showed you without them being any wiser. And then what? And then we see what's going on with our companions. We need to figure out what's going on with this company, how it becomes Amazon. We don't have enough information from out here. I'm going to compel you guys. Okay. Um, well, I'm going to compel you anyway. Specifically. Actually, you have your Omega thing as well, right? Yeah. Ensure a linear timeline. Right. Um, so, I'm compelling you. Okay. Because nothing has happened. You need to go through with this. You need to make sure you have to affect an ending. Mm-hmm. You have to change the ending. So, you're going to have to go in there. Then I'm going in. All right. Are you coming with me, Victor? Because I have to go in. I'll find my own way in. I have to make an alternate ending. I'll find my own way in. There is no other way in, Victor. Trust me. I'll find a way. Can yeah. I get in there? You can get in there and reach the building just fine. Okay. But is there like an entrance into the building near near there? Uh, yeah. There's, there's the main door and then there's a couple of side doors that say employee only. So let's say that when I left, I took at least one of your flashbangs. I give you all my flash, flashbangs. Really? Yeah. I gave you the basically the little pouch on my belt. Okay, and you're sh- and you're still not coming though. Yeah. Okay. I've got, I've got his flashbangs and I have my like future gun. Okay. So. You're sneaking in then. Oh, and uh, the extra ammo packs for that thing because right. there's another pouch with that. Right. Right. So, um, the two of you. Okay, I'm going in. The elevator stops. You step out into a very. This entire room is taken up by just this. Um. Thanks to the computers on the wall display case underneath them. As you walk kind of forward towards what looks like a very large desk at the other end, which has a set of displays on it. The displays going up through the eras of technology. One is like a piece of paper, and then there's not a clay tablet, etc. Doesn't quite go back there. <laughs> Along the far side, you see what looks similar to that device you guys had before, but in incarnations. The time travel device, you mean? Yes. Would I be able to tell at a glance, kind of like, which ones are the older ones and the newer ones? Yeah, it's very obvious. Yeah, okay. Because the technology level keeps changing. Mm-hmm. At the far end, standing over um, this console, um, the woman from before is furiously punching something in. When the elevator closes, her attention shifts and she spins around and sees both of you. Does she have a name tag or something? Um, I took it. Yeah, do we know her name, in other words? Yes, on the, on the name, it said uh, Abigail Sims. She spins around and says, How did you get in here? You're Sims, right? I am Sims. 
that I'm alpha. I need a report. There's been a failure on the uh, network linchpin. There have been temporal aftershocks, waves. Well, of course, that's the point. Yeah, well, uh, not the right kind. I've been sent from 2015. You know what that means. Really? Yeah. So, uh, I had to do a little surprise inspection on you guys to make sure you were still mm, coherent. Clearly you are. You've been sent from 2015. I have to play cleanup. Interesting, interesting. Then the, um, then the fusion experiments changed history to... Let's just say it's not that great of a place anymore. Amazon's gone. Right. We're in right. contingency plans now. That's but interesting because, you see, I haven't been able to get uh, the responses. I'm only getting half of the responses from, uh, from Andy's. Where is your device? Device. Yes. Which device? We're surrounded by many. <laughs> Have you been receiving the messages? I've been standing at this console for the past three or four hours. Does right protocol mean anything to you? Yes, it does. All right. Then I want some answers. I'd like some questions. What action are you taking right now? I am reevaluating what the effects of the next linchpin will be and trying to coordinate with Andy's because you and your band seem to have taken it upon yourselves to adjust things in your own favor and someone else's favor and we at Amazon can't really allow that, you see. Well, as you say, isn't that the point? Our point's not yours. Next week on River of Time. I care about one thing and one thing alone. Act natural if you want to live. You have seen these things before. They are not supposed to be here. Is anyone going to look at the screen that's flashing? There are only a few constants in the universe that James Worrell will have children. If he loses those children, he will do anything in his power to fix that. I'm here too. Stop the cycle. You guys, I think I just invented time travel. You know where your children are, James. It's been a really weird day. This has been Roll With It, a production of BackwardCompatible.com. The Game Master for River of Time is Will Parsons, running Atomic Robo the RPG by Evil Hat Productions. Ed Cameron is played by Chris Krueger. Victor Goddard is played by Brian McKittrick. Bernard Hutton is played by Adam Doc Bracken. And John Titer is played by Jim Weaver. Your producer is Chris Krueger. For the Backward Compatible crew, thank you for listening.